everybody, it's Jenny with Senior Perspective. I almost forgot my name. And I'm coming to you with Sister Wife Season 18, Episode 11, airing The Dirty Laundry. And um, there was some dirty laundry aired last night. I mean, it's it, the tides are turning. Yes, they are. So here we go. Let's get started. Right at the very beginning, we have the standard opening with the Coyote Pass, the obligatory Coyote Pass, or maybe just Flagstaff. I don't think they're all Coyote Pass, quite frankly. Flagstaff scene. Um, and then we cut to Christine talking about the conversation that she had with Janelle, um, which was the majority of all last episode, which, um, yeah, okay. I've taken notes on it. I just haven't recorded it yet, but I thought I'm just going to jump right in since last night we got a whole new episode. So I'll go back this week and, and do episode 10 recap for you as well. Okay, so that conversation that was in the kind of downstairs level, which Christine said there's four levels in that Airbnb that she rented, quite nice. Um, so in the downstairs level, her and Janelle were sitting there and had a lot of conversation, if you recall. All right, then we cut to Christine in Utah. So she jumped. And she's in Utah, and she's cooking breakfast for her kids. There are Kelty and Tony and Avalon and Peyton. Um, let's see, who else? Isabel was there. And I don't think Truly was there. Maybe she was in school. Okay. Uh, Kelty at this point, shares the fact that she's pregnant with um, Isabel, who didn't know yet. Um... It was so awkward. I have to say, I love Christine, but her kids, a lot of them are really awkward. <laughs> and one of those really awkward ones is McKelty. She's just, she's really kind of in her own world. Um, kind of self-absorbed, it seems like. Okay, I don't want to talk about the kids. I don't want to talk about the kids. But anyway, I, I say this just to say, she says like, in past, she's like, oh yeah, by the way, Isabel, I'm, you know, pregnant. And she, and then she's like, what? Really? What? And of course, nobody else is reacting. And then McKelty is like, well, everybody else knows. It was just such a harsh way of sharing with your sister, who eventually, when she realized this was for real, went up and gave her the warmest embrace and hug. And she was so excited and everything. But McKelty was so cold about it. It was very, very weird. And maybe she was nervous because, or slash excited, because she knew what was going to come next was the fact like, I've got sonogram pictures. Do you want to see? And of course, everyone's like, yeah. And that's when they realized that McKelty's having twins. There were, it was a very tender and sweet moment. Christine, I mean, I thought she was going to break down. She was so happy and excited. There were just everybody all around. Peyton, everyone, everyone's giving McKelty and Tony both lots of hugs and embraces and all that and Tony was very receptive to it at that time but you know you cut away to any of the breakouts with Tony and um he seemed pretty freaked out over the fact that he's gonna have twins and they did do flashbacks in this episode of when McKelty delivered her baby and he was freaking out during that too and and apparently he told her afterwards we're not doing that again he, I do remember watching it and him being uncomfortable and every time that she was in more pain, like I think he wanted her to go to a hospital, which is going to happen this time because in another conversation later on, I'll jump to, I don't think I have notes on it, but McKelty just shares that um, she's not going to be able to deliver with midwives because they're twins and that's high risk and lots of things can go wrong. So that's understandable. She's going to have to be in a hospital. Oh. I do want to um, reflect on the fact that in in this in these flashbacks and interviews and conversation during this time and and Christine talking about how nervous um, Tony was in that she kept saying like McKelty's going to be fine they're going to be fine uh, parents of twins I am not worried about it they're okay and she's like I you know we I don't know if she said we or I had twins. Um, and I know that Gwendolyn and Gabe were always referred to as the twins, okay? And a little backstory here. Gwendolyn and Gabe were referred to as the twins because they were so close in age. Now, you know, one was Christine's child and the other one was um, uh, Janelle's child, okay? So they're the twins. Well, when Robin came into the family, she kept wanting Aurora to be lumped in with them and for all of them to be called the triplets. But it never caught on. First of all, they had been the twins now for a decade. <laughs> so 
I mean, maybe not a decade, maybe we were eight years in, how old they were about the time that Robin came in the family. And so um, apparently this is something that Robin took offense to the fact that nobody was picking up and calling the triplets she was calling the triplets you know nobody loves us we're not getting embraced in the family but the understanding was that her um, daughter aurora's birthday was not nearly as close i want to tell you how close they were it wasn't until this episode that i realized the twins twins um that they call twins Gabe and Gwendolyn were only four days apart from each other. So, yes, one sister wife <laughs> delivers a baby. Four days later, another sister wife delivers. These are virtual twins. They're only four days apart. Yes, of course they're called the twins. Aurora, their birthdays. I wrote it down. Oh, shoot, do I have it here? Yeah, I wrote it down. Gwendolyn was born on October 15th. Um, and Gabe was born on October 11th, yeah, October 11th and his birthday, the one that Cody forgot. That's, that's kind of a date that a lot of people remember, but 2021, they were both born and at the beginning of October. Okay. The 11th and the 15th, or, you know, beginning to middle. And then Aurora was born on April 11th, whole different calendar year. <laughs> And six months later, well, of course she's not going to be considered one, a triplet. First of all, the twins were called the twins for the longest time. Oh, let's get the twins, you know, the twins, the twins. They did that for years. So to all of a sudden say the triplets would just be weird. Even if she was born like the month later, it would be weird. She was born six months later. And Robin took offense at the fact that they wouldn't start calling the three of them the triplets. Okay, side story there for you. Just had to say. Okay, now we cut to Mary, who's in Parowan at her B&B, and she's doing a self video of herself. So an interview on her own iPhone. And uh, she looks beautiful. She has a good filter. I should look into those filters. I have no filter, clearly. <laughs> Hopefully this video is better than the last. I tried to change the resolution on Manicam, simply because my iMovie would not record on this computer because everything had to be updated and I don't have time for that so hopefully you can see me better it's not as blurry as uh episode one which is the last one I recorded okay so Mary says not too long ago um it was Cody's and her 32nd anniversary um and she said that anything they've done together on their anniversary for the past couple years has been obligatory on Cody's part, because we know that they really haven't had a relationship in many, many years. Um, and then Mary points out that Cody um, hasn't even been giving her a phone call on her birthdays. So, I mean, I just don't know why she's just not getting the hint. I mean, we get the hint in this episode, finally, but like, she, no, she doesn't get the hint in this episode. She outright told the situation by Cody in this episode, and that's what she needed. She cannot take a hint and I know she's watching the episode so she sees the interviews with Cody and what he says about her and she says about how hurtful and and um, how much um, it hurts her basically but yet she's still pining and holding on nothing from him she heard nothing from him so halfway through the day she decided to call him and he's like hey how you doing you know just during conversation and she's like well happy anniversary and he kind of got caught back so like it, it seems clear that he didn't remember let me just side note here for a second. He didn't remember that. He didn't remember. He probably didn't even remember Christmas when it came to Savannah because he didn't acknowledge it or call her or give her anything. And he seemed flummoxed when he was approached by it. Like, oh, right. I forgot about her. I'm like, the one's married in another state. The boys are not talking to me. But, oh, shoot. I've got Savannah, too. You know. Um, he totally forgot about Gabe's birthday on his birthday that one time when, you know, that was just... We all, know, we all know which one we're talking about. Poor Gabe crying and all upset. Okay, so Cody's not good with dates. Fine. I get it. I'm not either. I could let my own anniversary come and go and forget about it. And our family has never been one that has to celebrate things on certain days. 
you know, it's like, oh, your birthday's coming up. Well, go down this weekend and that. Let's celebrate two weekends later. So I've never understood the people who have to have things on certain days. So here I am sympathizing with Cody. I just want to point that out because I don't sympathize with them very much. But, I mean, he makes it hard to sympathize with them. He really does. So I sympathize with them. But guess what? On my Apple calendar, I write everyone's birthday and say, same time every year. So I get a notification that comes through and it shows up on my calendar. Because that's what grown-ups do. They don't just forget and then don't take responsibility for it. For the birthdays and anniversaries of his wives and children. So Mary makes this phone call to him, says, hey, so are we going to do something today? Halfway through the day now. And he goes, well... I'm watching Robin's kids right now, so I'd have to ask Robin. Robin is going to say yes. It's not like she had employment that she couldn't get out of. The woman doesn't work. So what she was doing when he was watching the kids, I, you know, I don't know, but clearly she was going to say it was okay. But then in the interview, Cody admits, he comes out. Oh, he's getting bold and brass at this point in his interviews. He comes right out and says, mm, I needed a minute to think. Hmm. I needed a reason. I needed a minute to think. I needed a reason to say no. I didn't think it was the right thing to do. I had to think about that. I mean, he said that, and I'm like, did you just say, did you, did you, out loud? For all of the world to hear, like, you know you're being recorded, right? That thing in front of you is a camera. And you're going to be held accountable for your words. Oh, he didn't want to. Just go to dinner. Just go to dinner. As friends, clearly, because for eight years, they haven't been intimate or had any kind of relations or any kind of even marital, marital anything, <laughs> communication, anything for eight years. And yet, he was all flummoxed and couldn't figure out flummoxed. Second time I use it. Who am I? Cody Brown? Calendar of the day? I haven't used flummoxed in probably six months to a year. I've used it twice today. Because I'm doing Sister Wives. And I feel like I'm, I'm channeling my Cody Brown. Pick out a word and use it a million times. Okay. Word of the day calendar. Flummoxed. All right. Let's go back to my notes here. So we confers with Robin, who obviously said, go, go to dinner. So they go to dinner. And then Mary says during the dinner, he makes reference to faking a relationship. And then Mary says, faking a relationship, what do you mean? And Cody, Cody replies by pointing to the two of them. And he says this. Mary at this point is distressed. This is the first time he's come out and said these words to her face. And apparently it's the first time they've gotten into her head and she's realized, I am not in a marriage relationship. Mary goes on to say that Cody said during their anniversary dinner where they went out together, mind you, they haven't gone out together for a year. So this is obviously very special to Mary. And she's at the anniversary dinner, still hoping and pining they're going to get back together. And Cody says, I quote, I don't know why you called me today. And Mary said, because it's our anniversary. And he said, but we're not met. And then stopped himself at that point and said, and she said, he paused and said, but we're not living as a married couple. Um, now cut to Mary in her interview. And Mary says, that was a big realization to me all these years. That's how he felt about it. Yes, Mary. Yes, Mary. Let the angels sing. The doors of her brain have been opened. She can finally understand. He left eight years ago, Mary. Eight years ago. He even had a kiss from him. And eight, I mean, yes, he's gone. All right, we're going to go to a confessional with Cody now. And he's talking about his relationship with Mary and kind of like why it's gotten to where it is right now and where it was. And he said that seven years ago, he said it was around their 25th wedding anniversary. Anyway, things were terrible then. This is like the catfishing time, right? This is also just post Robin is married to Cody. So Cody says in his interview, 
through counseling and recommendations from my wives, I decided that I should fix my relationship with Mary and work on it. I don't know. Not the fact that he was in love with her for many years before he met Robin. Not the fact that he made a commitment to a marriage. Just because his other wives and his counselor told him there was nothing internal in that. He was very clear about outside forces told me I should fix this. I had no internal desire to do it on my own. And he said it just didn't seem like it was going to work. So this period of time he's referring to is the time that he says Mary kicked him out. Now, in the genius editing that TLC does often, not always genius, sometimes horrible, but in this genius editing, we now cut to Mary reflecting on the exact same thing. And she clarifies the situation about when he got kicked out seven years ago. We've been dancing on top of and, and talking a little bit around the situation when he got kicked out of her house. And she did say seasons ago, I remember her making the comments about, I needed time to think, I needed a break. And so I asked him to leave for a little bit. And then Cody, of course, calls this, she kicked me out. Mary clarifies, this is what she says. I wrote it down. I did not kick him out. I did not pack his things. I didn't tell him to never come back. I didn't tell him that I never wanted to see him again. I said, let's take a break. End quote. All right, clarified. There was no kicking out. There was just, uh, as happened in many marriages, we need a little time apart from each other for a minute here because Mary was hurting during that time and they were fighting a lot. Why were they fighting a lot? Why was she hurting? Oh, I'm going to go back and rehash this because I'm going to go back to all the seasons and talk about it. But the bottom line is Mary divorced him so he could marry the love of his life and adopt her kids. And eventually her worst fear came to fruition was that he rode off in the sunset with this other wife and he could because he's now married to her and Mary is nothing but the ex-divorced woman. Yeah. And she didn't feel any love. It, sh it showed right away. I, mean, I don't want to keep rehashing this, but like, it, it was clear right away when he's like, oh, you know, I'm not. He, well, he was saying to Janelle. Janelle was very concerned about the whole divorce and then marrying Robin. And he's like, what do you think I'm going to do? Ride off into the sunset with Mary? Or with Mary. What do you think I'm going to do? Ride off into the sunset with Robin? Ironic, right? Because now he's ridden off into the sunset with Robin and Robin gave him the little horse ring to represent the fact he rode off with just her. The thousand dollar plus really ugly, big, clunky ring with a horse on it. So Mary was right all along. By her doing this, she was just going to be shelved at this point. And she was. And poor Mary is so gullible and... I don't know how worldly and educated she is in, in that right. And she just thought, you know, her bringing Robin into the family was a secret her and Cody had, and she loved that. It was something nobody else knew about. The other wives were not even told about when the divorce was going to happen until two days before it. Like, that was another secret. That her she loved all these little secrets. It was she had multiple ones, you know. First, just meeting Robin and them, you know, starting to communicate with each other. Didn't tell the other sister wives, and she was like all giddy about the fact it was a, it was a secret her and Cody had. And then we go to um, when the divorce was going to happen and how that all planned out, and it was just a secret really between her and Cody. Then and they eventually, you know, and then Robin was brought into it too. Um, Robin acts surprised. I think Cody was talking to Mary about it the whole time, ahead of time, and then they decided to put it on camera, but who knows. Nevertheless, it, Mary didn't come up with the idea all on her own and just do it without discussing it with Cody and having multiple conversations where they had that special time together. So now Mary points out that at their anniversary dinner that night, Cody keeps doubling down. The things that he's saying to her, I mean, he made it clear, finally, He's never told her, I don't want, I don't want you around, I don't like you. He's never told that to her face. But at this dinner, he told her like five different ways. Like, I'm not gonna do this ever again. I'm telling her once and then 
that's it. She's going to understand. We're never going to be in a marriage relationship, marriage-like type relationship. End of story. You can still stick around because you have a lot of money and that really helps the family. But um, we're, the two of us together connected, ick, no, never going to happen. So at their anniversary dinner, here's what Cody says. I have no desire to have a relationship with you. Don't you understand this is never going to happen? Your life is not one I want to insert myself into. Jeez, Cody, brutal. <laughs> I mean, I get you. Do you have to be that brutal with Mary? I don't know, because he's never told her any of this before to her face. But he's making it clear. He's probably upset he's at this dinner because Robin probably made him go. It was painful to watch. It really was. I don't like Mary. I've never liked Mary from the beginning. But, like, last season and into this season, I'm starting to like her. Like, you see the softer side of her. You see that she's more rational, that she thinks through things. The Mary who has had a lot of therapy, I like a lot more. And um, she, you know, they just, she says, but you promised. And then she, and she's in tears. Okay, I've written down that now we flash back to the births. I don't know, I don't know what the connection is. Maybe it was a commercial break. All right, so I just find it very interesting that again, TLC, those clever editors are um, first flashbacking to Truly. So they must have gone to Christine and we're talking more about McKelty now. All right, so McKelty's gonna use the same doctor that delivered Truly. Um, Christine went to the hospital to deliver Truly. The other five children were home births, but this one was there. I, I, I don't remember why. But anyway, she went to the hospital and she was really pleased with what a wonderful experience it was because there was an epidural involved and the doctor was really nice and so it was all good. So they flash back. The one thing they didn't flash back to is when she's in labor at the hospital, you know, as things are progressing, she's bouncing on a ball and she's trying to let it go. And Robin, and this is a whole separate episode, I'm sorry, but like this made me so angry. Um, Cody at this point says he keeps he's on his phone he's on his phone he's on his phone and you know he's talking to Robin this whole time right um, and that irked me like the phone should have just been put away you're in the labor and delivery room with your wife your phone gets turned off and put in a drawer or in your bag or something there is nothing any man needs to be doing on their phone when their wife is in labor nothing I'm sorry unless maybe it's draft time and you're the GM of the football team. <laughs> Maybe then, which actually happened with Andrew Barry and the Browns, his first season with the Browns. His wife was in labor um, right during um, the draft. Anyway, um, but he probably wasn't even on the phone because he's a great guy. He's just like one of those guys that you just really like. Very friendly, very, you know, very, you can tell he's a big family man. Yeah, I bet even he was not on his phone. But Cody was on his phone. And then he like puts the phone down and he goes, okay, well, this looks like this is gonna be a little bit, so I'm gonna run and change my shirt. That was his excuse. That was his excuse to leave his wife's bedside while she's in the middle of laboring. He had to change his shirt. This wasn't an emergency rush to the hospital situation. He could have, he had a bag there. He could have brought another shirt with him if he needed to change his shirt. I think my husband wore his same shirt until the day we left three days later. <laughs> I don't think he cared. Um, but he had to change his shirt. I just remember being incensed. I'm like, first of all, you're not even focusing on her. Second of all, you go, okay, so that's one thing. What they do show is the baby being born and so she's in labor and Cody almost has a scowl on his face. He's looking down mm. as she's laboring. I'm like, okay, get through this. And then he goes and, and he, I think he caught all the babies, caught, um, delivered. When you grab them out, I don't know if you're actually delivering, but whatever. So he um, caught, he, he grabs Truly, so he's between Christine's legs. He grabs Truly and he, without a smile, without a welcome to the world, or hi, Miss Truly, or nothing. He just really pulls it on and goes, oh. And reaches forward and sticks it on Christine's belly. You know, 
on the on the other side doesn't walk around hand it to her doesn't you know like he's just sort of like here this is yours it was it was weird then tlc cuts to robin's birth at home and she's moaning quietly in the bed as she's laboring and cody's by her side and he's rubbing her and it's on her hand he's going you're doing a good job keep it up he's coaching her through the whole thing he wasn't on his phone didn't go see another sister wife, which, oh, by the way, when he went to change his shirt, he went to see Robin, and then he snuck a kiss. He wasn't even married to her yet. Oh. And in there, it, you know, Christine has said in the past, you don't kiss another sister wife until they're spiritually married because it's like um, adultery because he has a wife. So I, I get that. I get that understanding. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's kissed her multiple times because she found out about a kiss in another episode. Anyway, I digress. I just, so many things irk me about this man. Okay. So he's smiling, he's encouraging. Um, he delivers Saul, he's talking to Saul during the time, and then he takes and walks around and he gently sets it on her chest. And um, he's talking about how great Saul is and what a great job Robin did. And the dichotomy between the two births. These only happened, like they're only like a year apart from each other. So, Cody was disengaged with Christine. Well, he said he was disengaged his entire marriage, and he never even wanted to marry her. But yet, we're still tormented somehow about her leaving him and quote-unquote divorcing him. It, he makes no sense. He jumps here, he jumps there, he jumps here, he jumps there. It's like a bouncing ball. Like, today I'm going to say I really don't like her. I never liked her. There's nothing about her I like. And then the next day, I can't believe she leaves me. I'm so heartbroken. I can't even think straight. I can't even just have, focus on my relationships with my other wives because I'm so focused on this and, and so hurt by this divorce. Like, I'm hurt by a divorce from a woman you never wanted to marry, who's been bothering you, who you've had no relations with. It makes no sense. Make it make sense, Cody. We cut to Robin's house where they're having a birthday party for Truly, um, which I think is interesting. Um, Robin makes note of the fact that Truly was born after, well, I think Robin got married a year after Truly was in the family. So as much as Truly can remember, Robin has always been around. So there's more of a relationship there with Truly. And um, Christine has done a really good job of nurturing that relationship ensuring that they're going to go there clearly she's not like saying your parents are this your dad is that or robin is this that she's just you know she's letting it go and she's doing the work to see to it that truly keeps spending time with her father so at this birthday party it's cody and robin and her kids were they all there yeah i think they were all there and um it was truly and then isabel went along too, which is nice. I mean, it was a little awkward at times, but it was nice. I just have to point out that, so they're all talking that, and then Cody goes, oh, I better go check the chicken on the grill. And he goes to the grill and he goes, oh, I hope these are okay. What did he say? Let me see. Oh, these are looking bad. <laughs> Cody, you know, he thinks he's the man. You know, there's other episodes where he's like, men grill. You know, we do. That's what men do. We're grillers. But they only... I only remember two instances, maybe three, but the one might have been together in the same episode. But I remember when he got a the grill for the first time, he was trying to figure out how to use it and he couldn't figure out, like grills are pretty straightforward, <laughs> but he couldn't figure it out. I remember when he made steaks for the family and he burnt them. And then now he's making chicken for everybody and they're not looking very good. He thinks he may have burned them too. So not a griller. I think that... Robin, who wears the pants in the family, should take over the grilling duties as well. Truly and Ari um, look cute together. They're kind of goofing around. Um, Truly so much taller than Ari is, but I think she's only like three years older or something like that. Um, but that was cute to see. There, there are times when Isabel and Brianna are together in the kitchen and Brielle was like looking up at her hand. It was very bizarre. I, you know, she's just in Isabella standing like this. And then later on, Brielle is just standing like this. Like they just seemed uncomfortable around each other. Um, there is another time later on where they're on the couches and um, she was, Isabel was sitting closer to Ariella. No, 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 no. Aurora. All these A words. 
So Aurora was by her, and Aurora looked really sweet, and she was giggling, and she was laughing with her. I like Aurora. Brianna. I'm not going to say. My personal opinion. Let me just say, I like Aurora. I mean, she's quirky, too. She's quiet. Um, she obviously is under the influence of both of her parents. You know, most kids are, but because they've been so sheltered in that house and not had a lot of outside interaction, even more so. Um, but I like her and it made me happy that she was laughing and, and talking with Isabella. Um, we, you know, we cut to an interview with Robin where she says, I want my kids to feel safe and comfortable in my home. Here we go back to that safe word again, safe. I want these kids to feel safe. Why would they not feel safe in your home? Comfortable, just say comfortable. I want them to feel comfortable in my home. I want them to feel at home. I want them to feel like it's their home. I want them to feel like they can walk in at any time. Clearly they're not gonna walk in at any time anymore because the houses are all far apart from each other. Um, and even back when the houses were close to each other and the kids would just walk in and out of each of the other houses, Robin's had a big sign on the refrigerator saying, don't take anything unless you ask Robin first. Where the other mothers had all the teenagers over all the time and they were eating a lot of the food. And I remember it was an issue with Christine once where she had six kids of her own plus a lot of the other kids coming over to her house. And she's like, can I have a little more money? <laughs> Um, because she had double the number of kids that Robin did and then all the kids would come over too and Christine was like trying to make ends meet and she's like I need more money from the pot please please sir a little more everybody loves an Oliver reference so in an interview Cody says since the divorce Isabel doesn't seem comfortable around us much cut to an interview an interview with Isabel and Isabel says she has never been 100% solid with her father. And of course, if we flash back, she had all those back issues. Cody had every excuse in the book not to do the surgery, which you know meant he didn't want to pay for the surgery. But I mean, he said hurtful things about it. Like it was like, oh, but she'll have this big ugly scar. I'm just pr trying to protect her from that. She's in all this pain. He doesn't, and then he even said before the surgery, like she's in, is she really in that much pain? Like he's not around, so he obviously doesn't know. He called this a vacation. He still refers to this trip to New York to get the surgery done as a vacation. I do know, and I don't know how I know this, but I do know that Christine paid for Isabel's surgery out of her personal funds, not out of the family funds, because then Isabel's apparently not part of the family. Cody then says that he just doesn't know what he did wrong, referring to the fact that, you know, Isabel doesn't feel comfortable there anymore. Let me point out that when this all first started, he said, since the divorce, Isabel doesn't feel comfortable around us. Not since COVID, like everything is since the divorce. It's very interesting. He rewrites history a lot. Since the divorce, which was well after COVID, a year or two after COVID, um, everything that's gone wrong with his family, he has now pushed two years up. Like it, it's just happening now. Like these relationships are breaking down just now. And it's all Christine's fault because of the divorce. No, Cody. Mm -mm. It is your fault because of you. We did cut back to them talking about, when he talked about like the family's falling apart, how did this happen? We had this family mission statement. Remember when they did that? I just remember it being a boring episode. Um, but in the flashback, let me just tell you the interesting part. In the flashback, it was exciting because Jen, Mary's friend Jen, the exterminator, she was there at it. Yeah, Jen. So they have been friends for a long time because that family mission statement was a very long time ago. And Jen was obviously friends enough at that point that she got invited to the family mission statement dinner celebration thing that they had in their backyard. Cody reflects on like the state of his um, religion and, and church going and all that kind of stuff. He said that if he was in Utah, Utah right now that he would be ashamed to show his face in church because of the struggles that he's had in his marriage. So, I mean, I, I, this is where I appreciate Cody again. Let me throw out kudos to Cody. Kudos to Cody, because they don't happen that often, but he's at least admitting right now 
that um, he's embarrassed by this marriage, which is part of the reason why he didn't want the divorce or anything. He wanted everything to look perfect on the surface. Um, and by her leaving, everybody's going to know it's not perfect. As if we're idiots and we haven't been watching since season one where things didn't look perfect. <laughs> but apparently Cody thinks he's pulled the wool over our eyes for 18 seasons or 17 seasons leading up to this 18th season. And now he's starting to let people know, you know what, it, it hasn't always been that great. <laughs> I haven't, you know, had the perfect family. Um, Cody admits... Ever since they've moved to Flagstaff, they haven't gone to any church, which means he hasn't held a church either because they really haven't gone to church ever as a family because they were part of the AUB and the AUB doesn't have like a functioning church facility kind of place to go. The families just have their own services in their house and sometimes other families get together and that's church. Like these three large families all get together and we have church and then we have meals. That's sort of how the AUB works. So for him to say we haven't been able to find a church, well, when ever since they were back in Lehigh, he held his own church and then they flash back to that. Actually, I think this was a, a flashback to one of the church services that he did in his home where it was just their family, but it was Robin leading it. This is the time where Robin led the service and she was talking about her purity and how it was stolen from her and it was taken away from her because Robin had sex before marriage and got pregnant and then had to get married and then she had two more children. So that's how everything worked out. So the fact that she's talking about how it was stolen, was taken for her and how horrible it all was, poor Dayton. It, I, to me, it sounds like this is Robin trying to blame someone else again for the mistakes that she made. And in their culture, to have sex before marriage um, is wrong. And so she made a mistake and she had sex before marriage. Okay, happens. Well, there's consequences. And for her, the consequence was she got pregnant. So you roll with it, right? And she did. <clears throat> to her credit, she got married to the guy. She had a few more kids. It didn't work out. But for her to talk so negatively, degradingly about this, what resulted in Dayton, you know, Dayton's kind of like, what? are you talking about and I just love I will take a picture of the screen there's Dayton kind of looking like uh, we're talking about me here and this horrible and she's crying because it was stolen from her it was horrible and her purity was taken and all that stuff just awkward to have so many kids of different ages listening to this because we all know what she's talking about and the point that I had sex before I got married kind of thing um but Janelle's face is also just priceless, so I will post it up here and show it to you. I'll take a clip of it, but you have to see. So now we cut to an interview with Cody, and the producer says to him, have you heard from Maddie at all? And here's what Cody responds. No, I, I, do, I do not know what happened. With a pause between each one of those words. Okay. But, and then he says, but during the breakup with Christine, again, Christine's fault. We're going right back to, this is Christine's fault. I don't know how many years he and Maddie have not been in communication, but like I've seen him talk to Maddie once since Maddie moved to North Carolina, which was a long time ago, many, many years ago. So he starts to say, but during the breakup with Christine, and then he goes on to say, Maddie stopped reaching out to me. And then he said, might have been COVID. <laughs> he can't, in this one interview, he can't get his, set, his, his story straight because he wasn't prepared, he didn't prepare the answer. He didn't know the question that was coming. So he throws Christine under the bus right away. It's Christine's fault. And he goes, it might have been COVID. Okay, well, COVID was two years before Christine left you. I just, I can't. He can't, he, it makes no sense. And then after he says, might have been COVID, he says, I have no idea what was going on, but she, she quit reaching out to me. Again. Cody has not figured out, we're in 2023, I don't know, this is probably 2022, 
when this is being recorded, who knows, it could be the end of 2021, because um, their timeline is all over the place. But the bottom line is, well, it's an interview, so it would have been probably in 2022 or 2023 that they did the interview. Cody's still not figured out how to make a phone call. I mean, can somebody please give him a, a TED talk or a making phone calls for dummies book or something because I don't know. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Here we go again. It's the Robin Cody. I don't know. I don't know what happened. How do you not know? You're part of the equation. It's you and Maddie and there's no communication right now. Why? So clearly Cody's idea of communication and his family is everybody must talk to him. Everybody must be reaching out to him. He's the king of the castle. Why would I reach out to a peon? I am Cody. Quick cut to Janelle who says, Maddie doesn't call him because of his behavior, end quote. And now we cut to Robin. I've been jumping around so much, I'm pretty sure, yeah, this would be after the Christmas thing. Because Robin's statement is, my kids really miss their siblings. My kids really miss their siblings. Yet, Robin is the one that put a kibosh on the kids' Christmas gift exchange and them exchanging things with each other. She's like, my kids aren't participating. This isn't a safe environment anymore. This text link with children was not a safe environment anymore. So she put a kibosh to it. And her and Cody were the ones that wouldn't let anybody ever come over to their house or into their house. And then are all upset because the rest of the family's like, well, we'll see each other then. And and Cody and Robin and Robin's kids won't be a, won't be a part of it. And now it's, oh, I just, I, my kids are so hurt. They're so hurt. And it just, it's, it's the fact that she had such a major part of this. And again, it's like, is she acting dumb or is she dumb? And I honestly don't even really know. I don't know. Maybe it's a little bit of both. I don't know. Robin goes on to say, there seems to be this weird, well, we use all these words. She uses these ambiguous words all the time. Seems to be kind of, sort of, I'm not sure. This like her, which is what drives me nuts too, because I'm a straightforward person. She doesn't talk like that at all. There seems to be this weird wall I can't penetrate and we can't quite figure out why it's there. The weird wall is you, Robin, you put the wall up and said the kids should not get together for holidays. Years ago, back during COVID time. No, the families can't get together. They, and she was freaking out when finally they talked her into being at a park and being six free apart so that poor Saul and Ari could see truly at least in person. And she's like, yeah, stay away, stay apart. They're too close. Like she was just freaking out the whole time. She did not want the kids together or anybody together. This was, this is the bricks that were building the wall, including this most recent Christmas where she's like, my kids aren't participating in the kids gift exchange because it's not safe anymore. More bricks on the wall. Robin. Then Cody makes his, maybe because he has the little uh, a horse on his ring and now he thinks that he's Native American or something. He says, it, look, it looks to me like broken family. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds like, and maybe he's trying to impart words of wisdom because it sounds like something that like a, 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 a guru shaman kind of person would speak. Mm, looks to me like broken family. Anyway, that's what Cody said. Einstein, do you really think that the family's broken? Does it look to you like maybe your family's broken? Yeah, do you think so? Oh, I don't know, maybe not Cody. Cody goes on to say, I wrote this down because I was just like, what? He says, my own optimism wants me to say, it's just going to be this way now. Opposite of optimism, Cody. <laughs> Your own optimism would say, we're gonna get back together and be a lovely, wonderful family again someday. <laughs> the word of the day calendar got mixed up with the word and the definitions. They didn't match this time. That's not optimism. It's the opposite of optimism. My own optimism. 
First of all, Cody is an optimist, just corrects me up. But my own optimism says that this is just how our family's gonna be now. All right, he goes on to say, these people that are here. Okay, now this is a very last episode, which I recorded, which was episode one of the season. I literally had a whole dialogue of Robin of words and phrases and sentences that didn't make sense together that she was just spewing out and I'm not quite sure what she was trying to say. Cody doing the exact same thing right here. The two of them are two peas in a pod. I don't know who spoke like this first, but you know, she says she speaks Cody. So here's Cody speak, okay? He says, these people that are here together can work out their relationship. Okay, let's just pause. These people who are here together, I don't, is he talking about the people are we referring back? Well, this is an interview. So, like, which people? Is he just talking about his family in general? Is he talking about the people that were at the birthday party? Because we showed that in this episode. Don't know. Don't know. It's very unclear. He doesn't. He doesn't um, delineate and designate who his references are to these people. And he goes on to say, "It's time, and they can work out their relationship with me." It's time and they can work out their relationship with me. Okay, again, I'm not going to do anything with it. They can work out their relationship with me. But I don't know who they are. We, we, we haven't, again, established in this conversation who they are. And then he says, and it's complicated. The relationship doesn't end in my family, but something about it has ended. And it's an ending. And that's sort of sad. Make it make sense, Cody. Make it make sense. What? The relationship doesn't end in my family. What relationship doesn't end in your family? Now we're talking about a single relationship. What relationship doesn't end in your family? What do you mean it doesn't end in your family? I don't even understand what that means. And then he goes on to say, but something about it has ended. Something about what? About what? Oh my word. And it's ending. And when he says, and it's ending, he goes, and it's ending. Like he punches the end. <laughs> Thanks for driving it home, Cody. We have no clue what you're talking about. No clue. We cut to Janelle, who, um, she said her boys for her birthday were gonna make planter pots in, uh, at Garrison's house. He's probably at work that day, at, at that moment, but Gabe happens to be there and he's helping her in the planter boxes that they had built with the dirt and help her with her garden, which is so sweet because Janelle has always loved plants. She's the one that wanted the um, house in the cul-de-sac where um, it would be best for grow growing vegetables and stuff in the backyard. She's the one that pick wanted to pick the plot of land that was closest to the lake on Coyote Pass so that she could run irrigation because she wanted to have like a greenhouse there. Um, she's always, I'm trying to think of some other examples. She's always been the green thumb gardener person of the family. So I think it's very, very cute now that she's in an apartment. She's obviously not gardening, but Garrison has a home. He doesn't really have a yard at all. So they built planters so that she could come over. And then there's going to be interaction with her and Garrison. Every time she comes over to Tenford, she gets to see Garrison and they get to talk. And it's something that they share together because it's, you know, technically on his property. So I thought that was cute cut to a previous scene in this season where Gabe talks about um, how he hasn't heard from his dad, he hasn't seen his dad, he hasn't reached out at all, and he said the last time I talked to him he said something about he just cares about his minor children. So this is the first time that the producers are having him respond to that statement. So they cut to Cody in his interview and Cody rewrites history right here, folks. This is what Cody says. Quote, again, I have to write this, I have to write this down because you wouldn't believe it otherwise. Quote, I said to Gabriel, once you're graduated from high school, my obligation to you shifts. It's an obligation of mutual respect. If the relationship goes bad, then it's like, get your own place. You don't belong in my home if you don't respect me. Remember, it's my home. It's not yours. 
The fact that he continues to double down on this situation means there is no way any amends are going to happen. He can't let it go. He can't let it go. I just thought Christmas would be so easy. All they have to do is completely let go. All right, you don't have to apologize. You think I'm wrong. I think you're wrong. We're going to leave it as it is. We're a family. Let's just get together. But he can't do that. Of course, Robin won't allow that because she said the conversation has to be had where they have to work through it. So she might be the thing that's causing the problem. Maybe she's talking in Cody's ear and she's the one that's saying it. I don't know. But in her interviews, that's what she always says. No, no, no. We can't get together. They have to work through things. There's going to be a problem. There's going to be fights. Not going to be fights. Not going to be problems. It may be awkward. It's not going to be fights. Or maybe there will be because she knows that Cody has gotten so angry lately. Again, is he on steroids? I don't know. That's what people are saying. I have no idea. But it would explain his constant anger in all his interviews for this entire season and his anger in his relationship with the people that he's loved the most, his, his children. So I find it interesting that remember after they graduated and he wanted the kids to move out of Janelle's house and he's like, the boys are graduated. They are 18. Bye-bye. That's literally how he said it. Like he was a seventh grader taunting somebody it really was like whoa when he said that it like like chills up my spine but bye because they were 18 years old can i just point out right now that all of robin's kids are still living in the house and i believe that their three oldest are 18 and over just saying no bye-bye to them. The other kids had to leave, figure out how to get a job and work and do all the different things that they had to do on their own because they're 18 years old. <sighs> but to top it off, thank you TLC, we cut to Janelle who does her mic drop moment and her line regarding this whole situation with the boys and how Cody treats them and everything is this. I think Cody gets exactly what he puts into the relationship. Truth. Truth. Truth bombs. He gets what he puts into it. He puts nothing into it, so he's not getting it back. Why is this a surprise to you, Cody? He doesn't understand human behavior 101. So now we're talking about Janelle and her plants again in an interview, and she says that on the property, she wanted to eventually build some greenhouses, and, you know, like it would become like a profitable business that they could harvest and make their own food kind of stuff, but then also sell things and all that. She, and then she reflects on the fact, she goes, but we got to pay off the property first. And then we cut to, and she says that whenever she brings it up, that she gets the runaround. She's not getting straight answers out of anybody, and, and it's a runaround. So now we cut to Cody, who's asked about the same situation. And Cody says, we're, we're going to get the property paid off. I mean, Janelle pesters me about it all the time. She's asking, 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 pestering, but not really helping. Oh, no, you didn't, but not really helping. The only reason they're in the situation they're in right now is because of Janelle's money. Talk about helping pay off the property. Are you kidding me? She left Cody two other times in the past, like early on, before Sister Wives. And one of those times that she left him, she received an inheritance, I think, from a, a grandfather or somebody who had passed away. She came upon a lot of money. Cody comes upon the house in Lehigh, where it's all split up like that, and he woos Janelle back into his life and says, look at this great house where we can live. You can have this whole one side to yourself. You know, she's the upstairs and the downstairs on the one side. That's the best parcel of the three. She bought that house. It was her money that bought that house. And she was making all the money. And then when they go down to Vegas, eventually the sale of that house, which is her money, goes into paying for everyone else's houses. And meanwhile, she's working this whole time. The whole time that her kids were being raised, she was working full time. She didn't mind it. She likes to work. Um, but that's why Christine is so close to her kids and their kids are close because Christine raised all the kids. Well, she didn't raise Robin's kids. Robin got a nanny. Right? That was a hurtful thing in their family. Like Christine's like, wait, 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 we all raise each other's kids. This is what we do. 
we're already in separate houses. Why are you going to have your a nanny go over there when we're all here? Rob, Mary, my goodness, Mary's house all by herself. Have her help. But no, she got a nanny. That's what Robin did. Robin doesn't understand why the kids aren't all really close. It just, I mean, okay. A quick cut to Robin, who says, no, I'm sorry. A quick cut to Cody, who says, Robin and I still intend to build there on the property, which is what he's saying. I still plan on, on paying it off because we intend to build there. But he doesn't have any urgency to pay it off because the note's not due for another year. So he can use the money for other things because he knows as soon as it's paid off, then Janelle's gonna wanna build there. It's not part of his grand plan. Mm -mm. He doesn't want Mary to build there either. He doesn't mind putting Mary above the garage in a tin <laughs> barn demonium and she can sleep upstairs above the tractors with all the oil and gas smell. He's all right with that, but yeah. The dream home that he and Robin have on the property um, that was gonna be the whole family's at one point. It doesn't include Janelle. It doesn't include anyone else besides Robin. And he makes it clear, Robin and I still intend to build there. And then we cut to Janelle who says, I don't recognize these people who I used to be a family with as far as their priorities and thought processes. I love how she quantifies it too. Because Robin said that in another episode where she's like, I don't recognize these people. And it really bugged me that she said these people. All right. Well, Robin said, Janelle says the same thing. Isn't it interesting how delivery makes a difference and how qualifying and, and using language? I'm a speech language pathologist, so I'm highly in tune to words and the way things are said and then prosody and pragmatics and everything that goes along with it to convey meaning. But Janelle says, I don't recognize these people. Almost the exact same thing that Robin said that irked me so much, but Robin dropped it at that. Who are, she actually, she said, who are these people? And she was kind of snippy about it. The pragmatic simplicity of your voice and all of that conveys meaning. And Robin's facial features as well as her tone of voice with, who are these people? Is very different than Janelle sitting there saying, very sincerely, I don't recognize these people who I used to be a family with as far as their priorities and thought processes. Thank you, Janelle. Thank you for putting two words a complete thought of what you're talking about. It's their priorities and their thought processes that she's not recognizing in them anymore. Okay, we cut to a scene of Truly learning to ride a bike. We remember many seasons ago where Cody tried to teach Truly how to ride a bike and it was it was very difficult to watch and stomach. So like if you want to go back and find it, I don't remember what season it was in, but he was so mean to her. But Christine has that natural knack. So she was like talking through with Truly. Peyton was there. He was very kind and nurturing with her too and um, tried to just hold her doing it. And then eventually, um, who was it? Mitch, Mitch Aspen's husband. He was working with her too. And they were all wonderful. So we cut to Mary and we kind of bounced back and forth between what it was like at the beginning when they first got married. And I'm telling you, I've gone back and rewatched the first four episodes, the first four seasons to refresh my memory on a lot of stuff. Um, and gosh, he really seemed, he didn't seem that in love with Christine. So I will agree that maybe he never did want to ever marry her. Um, but he was very tender with Mary and he seemed very in love with, I mean, he was very tender with Janelle. And he seemed very in love with Mary. So apparently he told her, he said to her, um, when we were first married, I never loved you and I never felt like that about you. I was just trying to affirm it. Again, we're throwing the word affirm in, in, in the wrong spot. I was just trying to, what does he mean? Affirm, affirm what? Affirm is not the right word here. What's he trying to say? I was just trying to go along with it. I was just trying to convince myself of it. I was just trying to, I don't understand what he means. Affirm, affirm the marriage? I mean, that's sort of a weird way to go around about it, but I, I don't know. But those are hurtful words. So he basically says to her what he said to Christine, which is, never loved you. This was his first wife. His first wife never loved you, he says. And then Mary reflects and says, okay, well, we believe that our marriages are for eternity in heaven too. 
Why would I want this kind of relationship up in heaven? This is the question we've all been asking for the longest time. In the Mormon faith, they believe that a marriage is a spiritual connection which continues up in heaven. Why? Why would you want to be with Cody for eternity in this kind of situation? I don't understand. But I guess she thought that they were going to work it out or maybe they'd work it out. And have, I don't know. I don't know. But this is the first time she actually verbalizes it and, and says the exact same thing. What? Wait a minute. He doesn't want any part to do with me. And do I want this, what I've been experiencing for the past eight years, to continue in heaven? I don't know about that. Cody goes on to tell her, you know, you can stick around if you want. Like, there's not going to be any relationship between us at all. But you can stick around if you want. Mary added that during their dinner, Cody straight up came out and told her that he wants her to lie to the world and everybody about their relationship. During this dinner, Mary told him, okay, if this is how it's going to be because we are so public and we're out there on social media and on this program, on the show, I think that we should just be open and honest about where we stand right now. Cody says... No, you know, I already have so much criticism from everybody that um, I think that we should just keep this between us. And we cut to the interview where Mary says, listen, this is my story too, and I have a right to tell my story. Mic drop again! Yeah, you do, Mary. Tell your story. Tell all of it. Oh my gosh, you must have so much to tell. Tell us everything. But then we backtrack just a little bit, which makes me a little bit sad. This is the end of the episode, and Mary says, I have a choice to make, basically. I can be the same independent, badass woman that I've been the past eight years, kind of like living on my own and, you know, basically showing up occasionally at a holiday, although she hasn't been invited really to many of the last ones. Last Christmas she was, other than that, that's it. So she can just be in this limbo of, I'm still spiritually married to Cody. She says, or she can move on and she can terminate it. And then she adds, but moving on and terminating it is not in line with her values. Because... I didn't make this eternal commitment just to say peace out. Oh, she's struggling. She is struggling here. At least she has the full information now. He has come out and told her directly to her face how he feels. So she can, from this point on, at least be um, a little more educated on where he stands in terms of how she makes decisions for her own life. All right, that's it. That was it for episode 11. I think it was 11 in season 18. Thank you for joining me. Anything I got wrong, let me know below. Anything you agree with, let me know below. And if there's any specific episodes or if you want me to do their book or a certain season you want me to start with, uh, recapping, let me know. In the meantime, I'm going to try to just catch up on this season and fill in the blanks between here and episode one, which I did the other day. All right. Love to hear from you. Please like and subscribe. Just make me feel happy. Just like, you know, it'll, it, it, when I see, I get an email of somebody subscribes and it makes me smile. Can you just make me smile today, please? I need to have sister wife friends. <laughs> Take care. Bye.